We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome to the Freak Show. I'm your host, Bumpy McSquiggums, and today we're going to be diving in. We're going to be checking out City of Gangsters by Soma Sim and Casado Games, releasing originally on August 9th, 2021. And a big shout out and a thank you to them for hooking me up with the code for this. I've been real busy and unfortunately not feeling well. Like there's been a lot of delays, but I'm finally here. I'm ready to cover this. And we're probably going to start off just by going through the tutorial. It is a kind of a city simulator type situation. You'll see. We'll see. We're, we're going to dive in. We're going to begin. I said, we'll start with the tutorial and we'll go from there. All right. Generating the city map of Chicago. Or Chicago, as I like to say. Chicago. Just it's like, boom. All right. John Smith, 22 years old, American. You finally arrive in the big city, Chicago. The year is 1920, dawn of the Gilded Age. The country is prosperous, but divided. The National Prohibition Act just made it illegal to sell, manufacture, or transport alcoholic beverages anywhere in the country. That seems bad. The law is seen as an attack on the city residents and immigrants who don't support the temperance movement. Naturally, nobody in the city takes this law seriously. Illegal... Speakeasies and alcohol operations are popping up all over, and it's easy to persuade the police to look the other way. You arrive into this melting pot with a few dollars in your pocket and a family connection. You're staying with your aunt, Catherine Moretti. She has a small business in the city, and she's going to take you under her wing. But you don't want to run the family store. You dream about making it big, and this situation is full of opportunities for someone like you. Someone who's not afraid to take risks. As you get off the train and take in the sights of skyscrapers and endless crowds, you already know, this is the beginning of something great. Alright, I'm here for it. This looks awesome, by the way. I absolutely love what I'm looking at right now. Alright, uh, lesson one, look around. Catherine Moretti approaches you as you get off the train. John, my dear nephew, it's so good to see you. How do you like our neighborhood? Sure, it may not look like much, but it's ours. Let me show you around. All right, first thing to learn is looking around. Wazd, and you can also click and drag with the left mouse button. Waz, wow, that's, oh, that zoomed in. It's a bit much. All right, that's cool, cool, cool. Now you can zoom in and out with the F and R keys. Or Wow, that zoom is intense, too. It's really fast. I actually like a fast zoom. To me, that's something so many games where you're like, eh, 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 and you're like zooming like the whole way, and it's just like this very slow, gradual. Like, you need a fast zoom, so I definitely approve of this. The F and the R keys for the zoom. Okay, that's pretty good, too. Like, the keyboard zoom's much smoother than the mouse scroll zoom, which is strange. You think it might be the other way around, but it's all good. Finally, rotate with the Q and E, or you can use the middle mouse button. Nah, I like it. I like I like what I'm seeing. And by the way, the right mouse button and the escape key can be used to close dialog and pop up windows, except for this one. All right, makes sense. Lesson two: Who are you? This blue marker represents you on the game map, and it will follow your car as you drive around. Click on it to select it. Okay. Do you see the bright orange column of light above your marker? That shows that you're currently selected to perform various actions. Okay. Alright, it's highlighting that. You can see all the information about the selected person on the right side of the UI. Let's examine it in order. First is the person's mugshot, same as on the marker, okay, so it's easy to identify who's who. Second is the vehicle they're driving, assuming they're assigned to one. Right next to that are your action points, okay, uh, which determines how much you can do per turn, and, and movement points, which determine how far you can drive per turn, okay, four actions, ten movement, got it. You, you use those up as you drive around and get things done. Lesson two, who are you? All right, if uh, this person is assigned to a car, you will see it's in, you'll see it in its inventory right below. In vehicle, $300 and one baseball bat? Uh, sure. 
Meanwhile, right below the person's portrait, you can see their traits and details of their past experience. Moving your mouse over any of these elements will reveal more details. Go ahead and try it. Uh, okay, personality traits, organized. Faster experience gain while managing operations. Quiet, reduce, reduces heat for illegal trades and hardworking. Needs things done quickly? Or need things done quickly. All right. Okay. All right. Finally, to select somebody, you have three options. You can click on their marker above their car or click on the crew card in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Okay. Or press the number one key to select the first crew member. Makes sense. Pressing a number key once will select the crew member, while a quick double press will also pan the camera over. Okay, that's nice. Try it out now. Press the number one key or use any of the other methods. Makes sense. I like all this. Now let's look at your cash and your vehicles. Up here you can see your cash. $850. This is the total stored in all of your buildings and vehicles. Move your mouse over to see how much you have in which location. Also, how much you gained or lost last turn. John Smith has 300 and we have 550 in the third American delicatessen. Nice. Next are your vehicles. Cars and trucks. Next to each of the each you have the number owned and the max number you can handle at the moment. All we have is one car. We can handle one truck, but we don't have one. You will need parking spaces to re or sorry, parking spaces or repair shops to increase the max number. And to the left of that, you uh, to that are your corners and crew size. Corners? Interesting. Right now your crew is just you by yourself. You'll be able to hire more people once you expand your territory a bit. Now over to see more details. Corners under your control is one. Crew capacity, one or less. Crew cap is based on your territory size. Okay. These buttons on the far left show a variety of overlays, informational dialogues. We'll come back to them later. Okay. Now, if you look in the upper right, you will see the current date. Today's date is June 1st, 1920. This is the turn-based game, or this is a turn-based game. Each turn lasts seven days. Okay. If you ever run out of action points or movement points, press next turn button to advance to the next turn. Go ahead and press it now. We'll continue once you've done that. All right. As you can see, the date advanced. Sure. To June 8th, 1920. On each turn, all of your action points and movement points will also get refilled. Okay. Understood. Okay. The third American delicatessen. Now, this building here is going to be your safe house. Let's take a look inside. Click on the marker to open the building and dialogue. From the outside, this looks like a regular business operated by myself, your Aunt Catherine. But inside, there's plenty of storage, room to start a new operation. Let's look at this in order. First, click on the business tab. It's a blue tab on the side of the dialogue window. Small warehouse. This is the legitimate business that I've been running. It will provide good cover for whatever operation you'll want to set up. All right, we're taking a look over here on the left. Uh, legal business, a warrant of shelves and storage racks. This small warehouse is a maze of crates, boxes, and barrels. Okay. Now click on the storage tab, small commercial storage. This panel shows what's stored in the basement. There's a lot of booze here dating from before the prohibition. We'll make good use of it in a bit. 110 homemade beer crocs. We got a baseball bat in our car, $300 and $550 here. Okay, makes sense. Uh-huh. Now click on the back room tab. All right, back room, business, this space is available. You can set up a new operation here. Cool. This panel shows what's set up in the back of the building. Right now it's empty, but you could start a new operation. Now click on the corner tab. This dialog shows information about the corner we're on. A corner is the basic unit of territory. Every building belongs to some corner or another, and corners may belong to someone's territory. 
There are businesses at this corner. Whenever you're at some corner, you can visit all the businesses there. Okay. Benjamin's Baking Co. Benjamin Mitchell. And then the Smith, Smith Outfit. This shows the respect level at this corner and the respect of other people who are known around here. Because you have very high respect level, thanks to me telling people about you, this corner became part of your territory. Conversely, this is the heat level at this corner. Mouse over it to gain more details. Illegal activities generates heat, and heat attracts police attention. This is a quiet part of the city. Nobody has made a lasting impression here. Not yet, anyway. Speaking of the DeVille, here is information about the police precinct we're in. Mouse over to get more details. So far it's been quiet, and quiet is good for business. Officer Benjamin Lasky. Not paid off. Cops are not interested in this corner. Maybe you can keep it that way. Chicago Police Department Precinct 6. Alright, okay, let's close this window and get back to our safe house. Now I'll click on the tab with my portrait. This is me, your dear Aunt Catherine. I told you, or I told your parents I'll take you in and help you get started in the city. Close this dialogue window for now. We might be able to get our hands on a malt syrup here that we'll only use for baking. Just baking. <laughs> I've been beating my gums for a while now. Let's go for a walk instead. Agreed. See this business here? It's on the same corner as we are. Let's pay them a visit. Click on the... Okay. We are now visiting Benjamin Mitchell, who runs Benjamin's Baking Co. We'll have we'll go have a chat in one second, but first let's find out more about them. Move your mouse over the portrait, and you will get a variety of useful details about them. Their their traits and temperament are useful to know. They will impact your dealings with them. Ethnicity is also important, as people of the same ethnicity as you will be more friendly towards you. Uh, okay, acquaintance, forty-four year old American. Friendly, decreases cost of gaining control of a new building, decreases impact of negative social actions. Alright, sure. This meter shows how they feel about you. Mouse over to get more details. Uh, you have accrued plus two favors. Their opinion in view is 33 points due to personality quirks, plus three due to friendly. They are the same ethnicity as you, plus ten, plus four, or that's ten, plus four due to friendly. They know you from way back in the day, that's 20. All right, that makes sense. This person also owes you a favor or two. You will be able to spend them later, but choose carefully. They don't come often. Now let's look over here. This is how we can strike up a friendly conversation with this person. You can see what they're saying on the left, and we can choose our response on the right. Uh, sure. Bakeries use yeast, water, and some grain to make bread. Those are the, these are the same ingredients that can be used for other, more lucrative products. The owner of this business gets lots of produce from the countryside that could be useful. Hi there, welcome, what's going on? Let's talk about buying and selling. We've got a good relationship. See you around. Okay. Go ahead and select the first option to ask about buying and selling. Uh, for sure, let's see if there's something that you're interested in. If you're interested, I sell corn syrup, hops... Stoneware Crocs. You get a feeling he also trades in things you don't know about yet. If you wanted to buy or sell something, this is how you'd go about it. But there's another thing we could, or we should check out. Let's see who they know. Click on the Connections button, highlighted in the upper left part of the screen. Okay. Interesting. Shows you on the map, too. I like that. This dialog displays many more details about this person, including personal info and... Most importantly, all the connections we know about, which are limited for the time being. Uh, connections are going to be crucial for you. If you're trying to buy or sell any alcohol these days, you got to know folks who like you and who trust you. Makes sense. You'll need to learn how to work those connections to get what you need. But that's for later. For now, close this dialogue. How about a change of scenery? Let's go for a ride. You drive. Alright. Uh, driving around. 
Here's another nearby business. This one is one corner away. Click on its marker to s and let's see what happens. As you can see, some information is displayed, but we're too far to visit. You will need to drive over there to actually talk to the business owner. This is something you will run into often in order to get things done. You or one of your people need to actually physically go there and talk to somebody. So let's drive there. Click on your marker and select yourself as the active crew member. Boop. Okay. And now right click on the location closest to that business. I guess it's right there. You can see that the you can see that markers on business change color as you drive, yeah. The businesses on the same corner as you turn green to indicate that you can visit them. Conversely, businesses that are too far are dark gray. That makes sense. Seeing as this is all copacetic, I have a task for you to try on your own. Drive around until you find your cousin Harvey Moretti. He runs a little Budapest newsstand nearby. He'll be able to liquidate some of his uh, of the illegal inventory that we've got stashed in the basement. I won't tell you where Little Budapest Newsstand is located. That's your first task, but it's near here. Find him and pay him a visit. I'll leave you alone for now. And remember, if you ever run out of movement points, just use the next turn. Well, I'd assume it's right there. Yeah, it's it's right there. All right, so we're gonna move over to here, I guess. Sorry. I'm going to right click there. Okay. Great. You found your cousin Harvey. Now, ask him about buying and selling. Okay. Looks like you can sell him some of the homemade beer we've got stashed away. But you don't have any in your car, so we'll need to come back with the goods. Close this dialogue for now. Hmm. Huh. I want to sell homemade beer and moonshine. <laughs> nice. Drive back to the safe house and let's pick up some home brew. Understood. All right, so we need to click on our cells, drive back over there. Now open the safe house dialog and switch to the storage tab. Safe house dialog. Is that here? And storage, yep. The storeroom contents are on the left and your car's trunk is on the right. Now click on the homemade beer the storeroom until you've loaded 20 crocs into your car. Oh, you gotta do it one at a time? That seems a bit underwhelming, but I guess that's fine. Good, we're done here. Close the dialogue. Uh-huh. Now go back to Harvey and sell him as much homemade beer as he's willing to take. I'll leave you alone until you're done. Alright, my friend. Uh, sell or buy, I want to sell some homemade beer. Uh, that sounds interesting. He offers to buy at eight per croc. I might have some in the car right now. Let's talk about cost. Let's talk about an exclusive trade agreement. Let's talk about co the cost. I believe we're set at eight. I'm willing to let this go for cheap because I like you. But remember this moment, uh, I'm okay with the market price. I need to ask you for a bit more than usual. Times are tough all around. Oh, that's cool. You can kind of negotiate. All right. I like that. And we offer... How much is he willing to... They want to buy up to 17 Okay. So we get 136 bucks for that. Man, that's that's not a lot of... Okay. I mean, I'd take that. I'm just driving and going to pick up some beer that we already got laying around. You know, that's... Uh, I'd do it. i do it. All right. If you look in the upper left, you'll see that your relationship with Harvey improved a lot. Doing business with people improves relationships, especially if the business is of the illegal kind. As your relationships improve, you start collecting favors. Because Harvey has a high opinion of you, you now have a couple of favors ready to use up. Useful friends. Let's spend a favor. In the conversation with Harvey, select the second option to talk about favors and helping out. Uh, we've got a good relationship, and you said that you'd be willing to help me out however you can. Let's talk about that. We're family, right? How can I help? Now select the first option, asking for introduction to someone who's also buying these kinds of goods. Do you know anyone buying what I've got for sale or selling anything I need? I hear you have some inventory that might be hard to get rid of these days. You should meet my friend David. You're getting offered an introduction to Harvey's friend. Finish it and spend one favor to get the introduction. Tell me more. 
I'll take care of things for you, so you just show up over there, and he'll be happy to buy some of your um, inventory. I trust your judgment. Please put in a good word for me. All right, great. You got introduced to David Howell. Thanks to a warm introduction from Harvey, he already trusts you and will be willing to talk about illegal goods with you. Seems dangerous, but fine. Introductions from trusted friends are going to be the foundation of your business. Make sure you keep an eye on your network and take introductions when you can. Now drive over to David Howell and, se and send him some homemade beer as well. Sell him, excuse me. Uh, you know how to do this. I'll see you when you're done. All right. Well, I mean, I've got three. I got three homemade beer. I'd, I'd much rather get. How much movement do we have? We don't have a lot of movement left, so we really got to get this done. Is there a way to do more than? Oh, there we go. Two door, two door passenger car, 40 square feet with 100%. Okay, okay. Can't fit anymore. All right, we'll finish loading that up. And I suppose at that point we'll drive over here. Yeah. And here we are. He wants to sell. I want to see what you got for sale. Uh, let's see. Pretty posies and beautiful bouquets pervade. Customers here frequently order the special, which comes from a hidden cupboard. Perhaps we could supply a new special for them to sell? Great to see you. Uh, what can I do for you? All right, buy and sell. For sure, let's see if there's something you're interested in. In fact, I'm in the market for brick wine and homemade beer. Well, I'd like to sell you some homemade beer. That sounds interesting. I'll buy it at 8 per crock. Uh, you know what? I have some in the car right now. Up to 55? Wow, dude's... Uh, He's real into this. Uh, we can just shift click and get all of it. Okay. So control click, shift click. Okay, that's good, that's good. I like it. We can offer to sell. We made some money. All right, now let me direct your attention over here. See this marker with the question mark icon? That's a business that hasn't been scoped out yet. We don't know what goes on in there, but we can find out. If you're not already there, drive over to that corner so the market turns or the marker turns green. Once you're there, click on the question mark marker to scope it out. Go ahead. I'll wait. All right, we need to we need to rest. I think. All right, so we want to go there, but we can't make it any further right now because we are tapped out. So next turn. Made it there. Which one was it? I guess we're gonna go to Myrtle's corner. Uh, nope, it was this one. Sorry, Anthony's. My apologies. You took the time to hang out on the corner and observe the comings and goings, so it took one action point, or two in my case. But now we learn that it's called Anthony's, and we got some idea about what it does. You can see all the details if you mouse over the notification at the top of the screen. Myrtle's Corner and Anthony's Barbershop. Barber poles, chairs, razors, they use a lot of alcohol for sanitary reasons only. This establishment does a brisk business selling small packages from the back door in small dark bottles without labels. Okay. Once you start exploring the city, all businesses will start out unknown, and it's up to you to pick out which ones to scope out. Speaking of which, it's a big city, and it would be good for you to get out there and explore it a little bit. Uh, corners that you haven't explored yet show up as sepia-colored. And you don't know what kind of businesses are located there. It's only after you explore a corner that you'll find out what's there. Go ahead and drive to this unknown corner, but just as a heads up, this will consume a lot of movement points. If you don't have enough, don't forget that you need to advance to the next turn. Go explore the new corner, and I will wait. Okay, there we go. Cool. So, this is how map exploration works. Bit by bit, corner by corner, you drive around, identify new businesses, scope them out, and then talk to the owners to find out what they're buying and selling. But, if you can get warm intros, that's much better because they already start out trusting you. Earning the trust of somebody completely unknown is much harder. Great, you're picking things up quickly. So, now I have another task for you. Remember all the beer stashed in the safe house? 
Go ahead and sell it off, all of it. Afterwards, I'll invest the money into some kind of new operation. Maybe a brewery or a speakeasy. So go around, try to sell more to Harvey or anyone else who's buying, and if they introduce you to more people, take them up on it. I'll wait until you have $1,200 or $1,200 in total, then we'll continue. I understand. Well, we are... Uh, well, you aren't just... Sorry. Well, aren't you just hitting all... Hitting on all six today? Now that you got a nice pile of dough, did I already accomplish that? I, I don't... I don't think I did that. Oh, maybe I did do that. Okay. Uh, we can start building a new life for ourselves in the city. Understood. Now let's talk about operations. The real money in the city comes from manufacturing and selling your own illegal alcohols. The Prohibition Act made booze making and distribution illegal and therefore incredibly profitable. As long as you don't get pinched, that is. All right, to establish a new operation, you need to build con uh, you need a building you control with some empty space in the back. Fortunately, there's plenty of room in the back of the safe house, so we can establish a new operation there. Drive back to the safe house. All right. We've made it there in here. Okay, good. First, let's unload some of this cash. Open the safe house dialog by clicking on its marker, then switch to the storage tab. Storage tab. Now move a bunch of cash from your vehicle and into the safe house. Remember, you can use control and shift to move it faster. I'll wait till you have 900 stored. There we go. Great, now switch to the empty back room tab. As mentioned before, the back room is available. Press the new operation button. These are various operations you can set up. These are just the ones you know how to run right now. In the future, you will learn about many more. But right now, you only know how to make a few things. That all makes sense. Since you know several people who are interested in beer, let's build the home brew operation. You'll be able to distribute it easily. Make sure that operation is selected and then press build. Backroom home brew operation. Build. Uh, you would like to install this operation. Construction will take 35 days or 5 turns. Okay. Great, it will take a few turns until it's operational, but in the meantime, here's an overview of how this will work. Okay. Here you can see the brewery consumes malt syrup and empty stoneware crocks in order to produce crocks full of homemade beer. Move your mouse over the different elements to see more details. So every four turns, or every 28 days, we will make 50 if we have 10 malt syrup and we have the crocks. Okay. I see that, I see it. Also, you already have enough malt syrup in storage, but you're missing stoneware crocks. You'll have to go buy more because without supplies this operation won't amount to much and by the way later on when you have more money and people consider assigning a manager to this operation or installing some upgrades and expansions they can make a world of difference in improving your profit margins well isn't this the bee's knees you're already starting a new brewing operation and with only a little bit of help from your aunt your parents would be so proud which reminds me I should write them agreed in the meantime, you should go and procure more stoneware crocs so the operation can start producing some goods for sale. I'm not sure who sells them. You'll have to drive around and figure that out yourself. Understood. Tutorial getting supplies. Let's quickly take a look at some informational overlays and reports which are going to help you in various ways. In the upper left corner, you can see a variety of drop downs with additional information. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. This is the resource display. It shows you who you know that buys or sells specific resources. Go ahead and scroll down to Stoneware Crocs and click on it to see who trades in that resource. You can also look through other resources. You can bring this overlay up quickly by pressing Z. Uh, Stoneware Crocs. Why do I not see that? There they are. Okay, this place right here, Benjamin's Baking. Okay, continue. You can also select multiple resources and then mark your selections as favorite by pressing the left highlighted button. These favorites will be remembered when you open this overlay. You can then toggle your favorites by hitting the right highlighted button. Feel free to try it out when you're done. Close this overlay using the same top left button and we'll continue. Okay, and then... 
Okay, that's cool. Next up is the list of informational overlays. Let's click to open that. There are several overlays here, but we'll focus on just a few right now. The respect overlay shows your level of respect in the neighborhood. Your territory grows based on the respect you have on each block, so it's important to grow and keep respect levels high. We'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. You can also bring this report up quickly by pressing C. Feel free to explore and then click continue when ready. Uh, sorry, I didn't really explore, did I? See all known safe houses, controlled buildings belonging to you, other outfits, or uh, corner hooligans. Uh, or bought and sold items. Uh, known fronts. All known fronts belonging to you or other outfits. Okay, that's cool. Scheduled deliveries, car shops, police precincts. Okay. Respect. I see. The heat overlay is very important. It shows the amount of police attention each corner gets. Uh, due to its illegal activities or fights. The higher the heat level, the higher chance of a surprise police visit. You can also bring this report up quickly by pressing X. Continue when ready. The police precincts overlay shows which corner belongs to which precinct. Each precinct has one captain who patrols the area. Might be a good idea to befriend them. And at the bottom, the zoning overlay shows city zoning regulations. Businesses are typically limited to industrial and commercial zones, but residential zones might have their own surprises too. Below that, the population overlay shows the distribution of different ethnicities in the city. People of the same ethnicity are predisposed to like each other a bit more than average, so use that to your advantage. Now the third drop down is a collection of reports. Press that button to open it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to break off the episode right here. If I'm unable to save at this point, that's fine. I'll just play back through to this point because I can skip a lot of the dialogue and everything else. And we'll continue in the next episode. There's a lot of information here. I, I'm starting to slowly get it. I, I have a rough idea what I'm doing. And it looks like we're just kind of getting some of the extra details hammered out here in the last bit of the tutorial. Anyhow, we'll continue with that in the next episode, and then we'll dive into the game proper. So, hopefully you guys are on board with it. It's it's a very interesting looking game. I I was a little bit uh, scared. You know, games like this is always you you really need to dive in with both feet, or you know, you know, just just get into the game and play it a whole bunch, and really kind of commit a chunk of time to actually play it, learn it, and then kind of understand it and grow and do better and better. And I always struggle a little bit with stuff like that. So this is one of those ones where I was like. It looks really cool. I kind of want to play it, but I don't know. And I I finally decided, I'm like, I'm going to reach out and see. They sent a code my way. I appreciate that. And here we are. A little bit later than I wanted to be, but we're, here we are and getting ready to dive in and kind of fully embrace the game. So hopefully you guys are on board. If you want more information about the game, where to get the game information on the developer, the publisher, any of that stuff, down below in the description of the video, that is where you need to look for the various links that I'll have there for you. If you like the video, guys and gals, go ahead and actually leave a like, subscribe to the channel. You know the YouTube stuff, guys and gals, do that for me. I appreciate it. I've been your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show. We play, we fight, we conquer.